So in this video, we're going to go through the displacement pump and see what it takes to rebuild one of these and how it comes apart. Uh, they are both the T or EXP2 machines. So an EXP1 is going to be just a slightly different version of this, but I've got an ISO side and I've got a B side. And you can tell basically the only difference is the wet cup or the packing nut kind of that uh, holds the, the, the felt seals in on the B side. Uh, we're going to tear the air, A side one apart because that's usually the one that, that has the problem. So I usually start with the lower, take your hammer, loosen that piece enough to spin it. Okay, when you get it off, you've got all the parts and pieces. You got your seat, you got your check ball, and you got your cage. Inside of here, one seal that you're going to have to pull out. Down in the very bottom is a little white Teflon seat. You got to pull that out. It goes in the bottom. Other than that, there's nothing in there. Clean that up. You should be good to go. Now, the top part in the wet cup can be the challenge. That is the part that usually always goes bad. Um, this is what a bad one looks like. We had to torch this to get it out. The recirc line stopped working, so all that ISO got built up inside of there and eventually caused the failure in that. Now this one, the pin that sits in this eventually started to work out and that's what started to actually chew through the side of this and, and start making the noise. So this is the big problem. Usually you're, what you're going to see on a pump is like this, that the actual inside of that wet cup has come apart, the spring clip that's in the top has got destroyed, and this piece has actually stuck itself to this. Um, as you can see, you can't see through that hole, so it's hard to get that, that pin out of there. So this one, we actually had to break part of that away to be able to push that pin out to separate this pump from the upper housing. So this is typically what you're going to see, and you're going to have to find a way to get this off of the shaft without damaging the shaft. So wet cup should be maybe a little more than hand tight. Uh, again, this one's just kind of a demonstration that we rebuild in class, so it wasn't real tight. So it unscrews, that O-ring should set at the top and it fits down inside of there. So there's your wet cup. Uh, pretty simple, the way it works is when that piston moves up and down, comes down, it hits this wet cup pushes the wet cup up and down. Every time that goes up and down, it displaces just a little bit of that TSL fluid and just a constant circulation. So if this thing doesn't go up and down, you're going to have a problem. So other than that, on the top, not a lot there. We'll push that seal out in a minute. But you're going to start, push your displacement rod out. This one came with the sleeve with it. Usually the sleeve will stick in. No big deal if it does. There is a slot right here. What that slot is for is just for this. So you can get a hold of that and you can pull that sleeve out and get that sleeve to come out of the, the housing itself. So we've got the pump sleeve, you've got the displacement rod, and then you've got the upper check ball inside of that. So in the earlier video when we talked about taking the can of brake clean and flushing up inside the pump, that's where it's gotta go is up inside of there. That's where you take that check, that screwdriver Get up inside of that, check that check ball up and down, and then you can flush that out with your brake clean. So it's pretty easy, pretty simple pump. On the top side, you've got a spacer, and then you've got your seal. Fits inside of there, and then down inside of this, you've got another white Teflon seal. In one of the earlier videos, this is the one I talked about. If you are taking this lower cone off to just check those check balls, uh, be very careful that this sleeve does not slide out of this housing because this Teflon ring is what's on top of it up in here. You can put it in easy because you can put it on here and push it up there, but there's no lip to hold that in place. So if that sleeve starts to come down, what can happen is this thing turns sideways and then when you go to push this back up in there without knowing, you're not going to get that aligned right. 
And if you get it off to the side and you push it up in there and tighten that up, you're going to flatten this out and have a bad spot in it, and then your pump's going to leak. So if, the, if you're just trying to clean the lower and pulling that out and this sleeve comes with it, because sometimes it'll be stuck inside of there if the sleeve comes with it, um, be very, very careful because you're probably going to have to rebuild that pump uh, just because of this little O-ring up inside of here isn't going to sit flat when you slide this back up. So be very careful of that. Uh, and then you have another one on the bottom of here. Pretty simple. Biggest thing to remember when you're putting these back together is the order in which these go. These will come apart and be split. Gotta find my crescent wrench. So these will come apart. Hopefully this isn't too tight. So you can see there's the spacer on the bottom. The check ball. This black piece is just a spacer. Again, nothing special about it. It'll go in either direction. Just a spacer. You have your cup seal that's got the spring on one side. That always goes to the pressure side. If you put it in upside down, pressure's going to leak right by it. This is your upper one. Same thing. Upper and lower, make sure the springs are always facing towards each other because that's where they build pressures between them. And then you've got the upper spacer. Now, the difference on your EXP1s, all these pieces will be the same. They're slightly different sizes, but the difference on the EXP1s is the order in which these go in. They will stack them in a different order and your, your, your piston goes or your seal goes in a different spot. Uh, I believe on the one, it's going to go all the way up and then you're going to put these below it in that order. If you put an EXP2 back together in this fashion, it will not work for very long. This piece is setting too far up. When it runs inside of this, it's going to come up and hit up into where this fitting and everything is, and then inside of here, and it's going to ruin this seal. It's not going to work. You have to make sure you get these right in. You have to make sure you get these back on in the right order, depending on your pump. So, uh, in the pump rebuild diagram. Uh, we'll put the part numbers on the screen. There is a separate one for the A and a separate one for the B. Uh, watch that diagram and make sure you're putting them back in the right order. If all else fails, pay attention to the way you took it apart and put it back together the same way you took it apart. So that's pretty much it for that. On the kit, you will get new check balls. You will get all the new rings uh, and seals and all of that. Uh, some of those parts you will reuse. And when you put this back together, you do need Loctite on that. Um, so, but we'll go ahead and put it back together. Again, spacer, seal with the cup facing up. I have my part, the stem. I have the other one. I have my Loctite, put a little Loctite on the threads. Again, this is one we take apart for, for class, so I'm not going to put that in there. Check ball, don't forget that. Tighten that up. And there is a torque specification on that in the manual. So I've got my displacement rod. Again, I want to check for any signs of wear, scratches, or anything, especially if I've had to chisel off or beat off that upper ring uh, for the wet cup. Heating that can help, but again, you got to check this. If your pump is really, really old, uh, you may have to replace this and you may have to replace this. They will wear, uh, kind of like pistons in your car. They will wear out. There are certain uh, specifications on what thickness this should be and what tolerances those have, so we can get you those. You can check those out, but uh, if your pump has a lot of cycles on it, a lot of age, you may need to replace these two parts. So when you're ready to put this back together, again, our ISO pump oil. I've got my seat that goes on the top.
Again, very carefully push that in there so that you don't get that Teflon seal out of its place. Same with that. Now I'm ready to put these on. This part might be a little trickier. I like to put that in there so that it gives it a little bit of a guide. Helps keep it centered. And then push that down. around that, get that to push down. Then when you're ready for your wet cup, you can use your wet cup to push it the rest of the way down. Start threading that on and it'll push that the rest of the way in. You know, sometimes you gotta be careful about that O-ring. Uh, sometimes it'll like to pop out of there. If you tighten it down without noticing it, uh, you'll cut the O-ring. So we've got that. Push this up a little farther. I want to make sure it's coming out the top so I can get the pin back through. Okay, the lower section, again, Teflon O-ring. Make sure it's seating down at the bottom where it's supposed to, all the way at the very, very bottom. Your seat goes in. Again, you want to inspect this seat. If it's new, you shouldn't have any issues, but there shouldn't be any real little dings or anything out of that, any nicks in it. Uh, it is double sided so you could use either side. Put it in there, check ball in there, cage over the top of it. This seal seals down inside of that so a little bit of lubrication on that. Back together, tighten it up a little bit, pump's ready to go back on.